what's up guys welcome back to the channel here we are with another reaction video guys y'all see who we're back with i love reacting to jashankar uh but we're from hindi proverb to newton lesson top moments with eam jashankar ridiculed canada pm trudeau trudeau however you say his name uh before we dive into this if you guys happen to enjoy please don't forget to smash that subscribe button give the video a thumbs up also, if you'd like to support this channel by becoming a member, all you got to do is smash that join button to receive your exclusive benefits. Let's dive right in. Canadian NSA's remark. You know, I was, uh, what shall I say? Uh, mm, okay. The phrase which came to my mind was actually a Hindi phrase, which was Ulta Chor Kotwal Kodante. I mean, I have, we, if anybody has a complaint, we have a complaint about mm -hmm. Canada. You know, what I said earlier, the space that they're giving to Khalistanis and to violent extremists. So, I, I was very perplexed by what I heard. Uh, you know, uh, for some time now, uh, there, are, uh, there is this case of uh, uh, students uh, who the Canadians say did not study in the college which they should have studied and when they applied for a work permit, they got into difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, from the very start, we meaning uh, the foreign ministry here as well as the uh, our high commission and the consulates in Canada have taken up that case and our point is that look the students studied in good faith mm -hmm. yeah. if there were people who misled them the people who misled them the culpable parties should be acted against it is unfair to punish a student who undertook their education uh, in good faith Yes. Uh, so uh, the latest report that I got, uh, in fact, only this morning was that I think uh, yesterday the Canadian Prime Minister also uh, kind of made a statement uh, in the House of Commons there, and uh, the Minister also tweeted uh, something, and they have also been talking to our High Commission out there. I think the Canadians also accept that you know it would be unfair. I mean, if this, if a student has done no wrong. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I don't know if all the cases are the same. I mean, there is a granularity about it, which sitting at this distance, neither you or I can judge. If any, you know, if a student has done no wrong, they accept the idea that, uh, you know, they have to find some uh, solution for it. So we yes. will continue to press. And uh, I would very much hope that the Canadian system uh, is, is fair uh, in that regard. Uh, yeah. Regarding the this float issue use, I let me let me actually uh, answer it because I think there's a bigger issue involved, uh, and the bigger issue involved is really the space that Canada has uh, continuously and uh, frankly uh, to us, uh, you know, uh, we are at a loss to understand other than uh, the requirements of World Bank politics why anybody would do this. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at their history, I mean, you would imagine that, that they learn by the history and they wouldn't like to repeat their history. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, it isn't only one incident, however egregious it may be. I think there is a larger underlying issue about uh, the space which is given to uh, separatists, to extremists, to mm. people who advocate violence. And I think it's not good for the relationship and I think it's not good for Canada. Yeah. on this particular report and i feel like i still would like to know what he said um in uh hindi so if you guys could tell me that phrase that he kind of said at the beginning I'd, I'd love to know exactly what it was that he said but um and I, i'm not sure the exact situation going on so i'm assuming students from india are going over to canada to study at certain universities and Canada saying like, hey, so I guess something went wrong in Canada saying they're being misled and these students aren't actually studying at the right universities or aren't studying the right majors or the visa, they didn't get the right visa. Or not sure what the situation is. And he's saying like, that, sh that shouldn't be on the students. The students went over there to study in, in good faith, right? And if somebody messed up, it should not be, the students should not be punished for that. Whoever messed up should be the ones held accountable for that. But it shouldn't be on the students. And each situation is different. So if it was on the students, uh, completely understandable. If it was not on the students, there needs to be a solution found to where these students, they have no consequences for these actions because all they went was to study in good faith. 
Um, then he kind of talks about the space that Canada holds for pe like extremists, um, separatists, people who incite violence. He's saying that's not good for the relationship between Canada and India, not good for Canada in general. And we've seen a couple videos where it seemed like people like have incited a lot of violence against India or India pol Indian politicians over in Canada. Um, and then you have Canada pointing a finger at India for the death of, um, I can't remember his exact name, but he was a Khalistani. Um, and India is like, there's, there's no proof that has been, that has been, I guess, shown to the public and India is like, we haven't got a shred of proof that they, that, and so it's just them pointing the finger at India for no reason. Um, there's a lot of problems happening, but, um, let, let's go to problem number two. Tell me what you guys think of that first one. We'll jump into the second one. Which has come. I also saw it yesterday night. I was coming to uh, Odisha in the morning. Uh, okay, I mean, somebody may have been arrested. Their police may have done some investigation. But the fact is, number of gangland people, number of people with organized crime links from Punjab have been made welcome in Canada. We mm. have been telling Canada, saying, look, these are wanted criminals from India. You have mm. given them visas. You let, they have come, many of them, in false documentation. And yet you allow them to live there. If you decide to import for political purposes people with very dubious, actually very negative background, there yeah. will be issues. You know, yeah. They have, in some cases, created problems in their own country as a result of their own policies. No, why would we fear? I mean, it, if something happened there, it is, it is for them to worry about. Our yeah. biggest problem right now is in Canada. Because in Canada, actually, the, today the, uh, the party in power in Canada, other parties in Canada, have given these kinds of extremism, separatism, advocates of violence, a certain legitimacy in the name mm. of free speech. Mm. See, when you tell them something, their answer is, no, 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 we are a democracy, but it is free speech. But the point that they need to understand, this kind of, you know, it's no longer a world which runs as a one-way street. That yeah. if there are things which happen out there, there will be pushback. You know, yeah. the Newton's law of politics will apply there also. You know, that there <laughs> yeah. will be a reaction. Others will, uh, you know, uh, take steps or counter it. When I see, for example, these kinds of uh, attacks or threats to our embassies because they concern me very deeply and yeah. I tell the foreign minister saying suppose it happened to you if it was your diplomat your embassy your flag how would you react yeah so yeah. we have to keep our position strong we have uh, yeah a high yeah and he's not wrong not one bit in saying that um, and he's like yeah like if you're we are telling you guys we are telling y'all these are wanted criminals in India. These are extremists. These are separatists, right? The and y'all are bringing them in for political purposes or whatever purposes you're allowing them to get visas. You're you're bringing them in when we're telling y'all they are criminals. And then something happens. You cannot then point the finger at us because we have told you constantly. But you hold this space open for them to spread their ideals of extremism and everything through the uh, right of freedom of speech. And it's like things like stuff is going to happen. Newton's law for every action. There's the opposite or reaction. It was something like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they said that works in politics as well. And it's like 100 percent understand where he's coming from when he said I'm deeply concerned, like, because if it was your politician, if it was your embassy, if people were burning your or whatever, I guess they burned the flag or whatever they did to the flag. If it was your flag, you would feel a type of way. And so they're telling it seems like they're trying to get through the foreign ministers like, hey, like this isn't right. Like they are our, our politicians or our ambassador, our embassy. This should not be happening. There should be consequences in, and there should there should be things happening uh, so that this doesn't happen looking forward. Because um, right now it sounds like the partnership, like it, the Canada just kind of ignores India and then when something goes wrong, blames India. And then they're allowing these things to happen and India's like, no, like this, this is not cool. So we have to keep our position strong. We have uh, uh, had an ongoing uh, problem with uh, uh, Canada and the Canadian government for some years now. Uh, mm -hmm. And the ongoing problem really uh, 
uh, revolves around the permissiveness uh, in regard to terrorism, uh, extremism and violence. Uh, and this permissiveness uh, is also reflected in the fact that uh, uh, some uh, important extradition requests have not been uh, responded to from their side. In the fact that uh, there are uh, individuals uh, uh, and organizations uh, uh, who are clearly involved with uh, violence and uh, uh, illegal activities in India, who themselves declared it. I mean, it is not a secret. Uh, yeah. And uh, that uh, they, they continue to, uh, to carry on with their activities in Canada. And, um, and most important, uh, the fact that uh, our diplomatic uh, missions and our diplomatic personnel have been consistently and continuously intimidated in Canada to a point where today it is not uh, safe for them uh, really to, to uh, carry on with their, with their, with their work. I mean, uh, obviously the fact that we've uh, had to uh, to temporarily suspend our visa operations. I mean, it is not That's something crazy. we would have liked to do. Yeah. It is just that they have made it very difficult for us to uh, to operate those services because our personnel are today uh, insecure. We are a democracy. We don't need to learn from other people what freedom of speech is about. Yes. But we can tell people this. We don't think freedom of speech extends to incitement to violence. Facts. Facts. You know, that to us is misuse of freedom. Agreed. It's not a defense of freedom. Ag agreed. And I always ask people one question. How would you react if you were in my shoes? Mm. If it was your diplomats, yeah. your embassies, your people, what would be your reaction? Hamari Chinta, yeah. Canada. We're talking about having to pull like, uh, diplomats and everything back out of Canada because nothing is being done and it seems like these people who are inviting inciting violence under the threat of freedom of speech and nothing's being done it's like bro like i'm worried like how would you respond would you not get them up out of there and concern for 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 their lives and so you have to suspend operations and visas between the two and it's like um, we don't have a choice because it seems like india continues to say this and canada's like oh freedom of speech freedom of speech they're, they're, they're allowing it. It's like incitement of violence should not be protected under freedom of speech. It should not be. And so, how, yeah, how would you respond? Uh, it just seems like the relations between Canada and India at this point have just kind of snapped. Uh, yeah, India is just kind of tired. It seems like India's grown tired of Canada at this point. Um, let me know what you guys think. It's hot, yeah, hey? कि उनके अपने राजनीति में उन्होंने ऐसे ऐसे I'm gonna see if they do have an English Okay, dang I could have taken it for the first हमारी चिंता कनाडा के साथ ये है कि उनके अपने राजनीति में It's not reading उन्होंने ऐसे ऐसे विचार धाराओं और ताकतों को जगा दी है जो हमारे खिलाफ तो हैं पर हम उनको कहते हैं कि भाई आपके लिए भी ये काम नहीं आएंगे कि आप अगर ऐसे लोगों को बसने दोगे और इनको आप अपने राजनीति में शामिल करोगे तो ये आपका भी बहुत भारी नुकसान होगा Someone got to talk to me about what he's saying in this one because I don't understand the language and the closed captions auto generation is not picking it up so for this fourth one I'm going to need y'all's help जो जो जिनको माने मैं कहूंगा जो एक्सट्रीमिस्ट सोच के लोग हैं जो जो कभी-कभी आतंकवाद की भी प्रशंसा करते वो आप ही बताइए डेमोक्रेटिक सोसाइटी में किसी भी डेमोक्रेट मैं मैं खाली कनाडा की बात नहीं कर रहा कि एक बार आपने ऐसे लोगों को माने जगह दे दी और वो कहीं न कहीं आपके पॉलिटिक्स में उन्होंने अपना स्पेस बना लिया उसका तो दुरुपयोग जरूर करेंगे वो लोग और जैसे मैंने कहा जब एक बार स्पेस दे दिया फिर वो बोलने लग गए फिर बातें आगे बढ़ गई फिर उस रिश्तों पे तो उसका प्रभाव पड़ी होता है यू नो यू यूज्ड अ डिफरेंट वर्ड आई थिंक द वर्ड दे यूज्ड वाज एलिगेशन सो 
you know, I've, I've already, uh, I think, answered it uh, starting with Lalit, which is we've always said that, look, if there is information, let us know. There you go. So, uh, you know, our doors, I want to make one thing very clear. It's not that our doors are shut to looking at something. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, there is a requirement for us to look at something, we are open to looking at it. But, you know, I then expect, you know, somewhere... Uh, some pointer, something for me to look at. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> he's saying, or, like, if y'all got information that, that are proof against anyone in India connected to anything in Canada, any any violence or anything, then we're open to looking at that. Yet, you haven't sent us anything. You haven't given us anything to look at. So, there, there's nothing. We, we don't have anything. Um, so our doors are open, our doors aren't locked to it, but, um, overall it just seems like that relationship between Canada and India has kind of been strained, um, and India is kind of tired of that relationship. It seems like Canada is not really listening to anything that India has to say, or especially when it comes to terms of people who, who are spreading extreme ideas, who are inciting violence, um, inciting violence against, um, the diplomat that India has in the embassy in Canada. So it seems like it's just, uh, they're tired of it. And, uh, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. I understand it. Let me know what you guys think about this video. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to subscribe, get a video, a thumbs up, check out the next one. And I'll see you guys next time.